viewers and welcome back once again for another Minecraft video from Iron Mango 21. That is me and these, these are two builds I have just recently completed. Now, you might ask, why have you built such things? Why go onto a super flat world and connect two buildings to a village? What on earth could be the point of that? Well, it, you may or may not be familiar with a server by the name of the World of Corrales, run somewhat, somewhat run by a YouTuber by the name of Corrales, very popular guy, whose, vi whose videos I watch and do enjoy. So he also happens to run this server, and it is a creative build server that I thought might just be the place for a let's build. So this, this is my application to that server. I will be submitting screenshots from both of these builds and hopefully the admins of the World of Corrales will enjoy this and decide to let me on their lovely server. So without further ado, I think that I should just get, take you guys on a little tour of these since I put all the time into building them. So, before we start, let me just circle. Circle this first build over here. And by the way, if you're wondering what sort of time frame I built this in, I know people enjoy some little technical details like that every now and then. These builds were each completed, I believe this one was in three days, and that one might have been in seven days a week, because I had to learn how to build modern in order to build that because I do not often build modern, nor am I very good at it. So that's not really the house to pay attention to. I'm much more proud of this one because it is, in my opinion, a more, a more scaled, better house in general, just because I have more talent with this style as opposed to modern building. But I am proud that I built that because I built a modern building in the first place, which is not something I often do. So I'm proud that I at least completed that. So this is a very simple house. Both of these are very simple houses. They are relatively small. They were both built on the same lot size. Um, I don't know if you're going to be able to see that in the video necessarily, but if you look here, there's distinct lines that cut off the areas where I've terraformed. Some of the flora and fauna go outside, or I suppose really just flora, right? I don't know. Um, I won't, never mind. So that exceeds the, mess, the original lot size, but all the terraforming, all the building is done within that lot. It's a little bit easier and more distinct on this build because you can easily see this wall right here is on the lot, and so therefore you know exactly where it is. But you guys probably aren't interested in lot sizes and how I went about this, but rather what exactly it is I did. So I'm just going to get a little more in-depth look at the exterior here because that is my talent in building, so I'm good at exteriors. I, however, am not very good at interiors, so we'll probably spend a little more time on the exterior than we do the interior. And oh, oh lord, it is it's growing to be nighttime. Haha, ha. I fixed it. So, that is that. Now, let's head on inside. There is only one door on this house. It is a very simple, somewhat traditional house. Not really, it's more fantastical, if anything, because you don't often see houses of this type. So this is your little sort of coat hanger, rack space that you, it's your little hallway that you walk into. I wouldn't call it a mudroom necessarily, but it's a place to put your shoes and your coat and your hat. And then you walk into the kitchen, dining room, and living room here, all combined into one. Yep. These houses are both a little tight on space, so sometimes I had to do things such as combine little rooms together and to a very small space, but I think it worked out all right. 
So you got your fireplace here, little coffee table, your couch, and then you have the dinner table here. Two, only two seats, just because it's somewhat, like I said, it's a somewhat one person house, maybe a bachelor pad. I don't know necessarily, but that's sort of what I envision it as because it's not a whole lot of accommodations for, say, a family. Oh dear, it's raining outside. Lovely. We will continue the recording nonetheless and just go forth and push through the rain. Oh! Never mind. Um. I will be back in a moment, guys, because that sounded bad. Well, everything appears to be fine. I was slightly concerned that lightning may have struck a piece of the house and done some damage to the exterior, but no, I was incorrect in that assumption. So, let's continue with the tour. So you have your stove right here, your ovens and all, then you have a little area, maybe a cutting board right there, a little glass, refrigerator, then you've got your little sink, and then you have your kegs of some substance, I'll call it root beer for the purposes of this video, let's keep it PG. And then you have your little, I wouldn't necessarily say brewing area, area because in a realistic house you don't necessarily have a brewing area on the side of your kitchen, but this is somewhere to prepare a drink. So let's progress into the next section of the house. So now we are inside that tower that you saw from the outside. And this is a little bit of closet space. Just walk through closet space right here. for are storing various things. And then if you head down here, this is where I have squeezed in a bathroom. Yep. Like I said, I'm tight on space, so things have to be put where they can. Now we're gonna head back up and we're going to start ascending the tower. So now that we get to the second level of the house, this is a little sort of relax relaxation TV room right here. The view of the TV is a little bit obstructed by this lamp here, but it is all right. You can see it mostly somewhat. You got your nice bookshelves right here. And then if you go on over here, this is the bedroom. And there are some really chatty bats hanging about. It's starting to drive me a little insane. But it is all right, let's pretend they're birds outside the window because that's more pleasant and won't drive me insane. So you have your bed right here. Very standard bed. This is one of the easy beds that most people make if they do not just simply place the given Minecraft bed. Sorry if you experienced a brief little cut there. My computer had a technical issue with the recording. It's a new computer, as I said before, so it still is getting used to being used, perhaps? I don't know. But without further ado, let's continue with the tour. So, this is the bed, as I said, very standard. You have a little dresser here with perhaps some paintings of some sort. I honestly don't know what the practical application of that would be. You have a closet right here, a little dresser. And then you have a desk with a laptop on it. Very useful. Now, let's head on up to the third floor. You just have to climb this little ladder here. Keeps you nimble, keeps you on your feet. And then you are inside an office. Yes, rather lovely. I do enjoy this office. You get a nice view, nice 360 view all around the tower. You can look down upon the village and your neighbor. I wouldn't mind having this office in real life. It's rather nice. Then you got the little peak of the tower right there with the glowstone in it. I debated putting a beacon up there, but the obsidian on the bottom of the beacon looked a little strange. Now let's head down. And head on over to the second build. And here we are. So, let's do a little fly around real quick. That is the entrance right there but we are not going to head inside yet because I want to show you the exterior. So this took some work because I'm not a modern builder. That is not my field of expertise. 
So I really struggled to figure out how exactly to build Lover. But once I got it, I think I did all right. So that is all nice. It's all about shapes, really, is what modern building is about. That's at least what I've learned in my experience with it. I don't know if someone else would beg to differ, but it seems to be about shapes. So, you have your solar panels on the roof there, perhaps a smokestack or two, a little skylight looking down into a reading up there, and a window, some beacons on the outside to provide some exterior lighting. And then you have a little entranceway here. You got a little waterfall with some reeds and some bushes around. And then you head up the staircase and head on inside. So the interior of this build is going to be a lot nicer than that of the build you saw over there because modern interior is perhaps somewhat easier to do, or not necessarily easier, but there are more options with the modern interior than there are with the traditional. Because with modern interior, you can use all sorts of shapes and things that are readily available in Minecraft. So here's another entrance here. I suppose not much, not much of an entrance, but you can walk out here and it's a little garden slash, I wouldn't really call it a balcony because you're just on top of this wall, which doesn't get you very high up. So you got some shelving here, you can climb up, got a nice little painting, a lamp, some light, and then you have this over here, again, another coat and hat rack, little plant, little painting, and then you walk in here to a little sitting room, you got a very nice couch, a little coffee table, some mo somewhat modern shelving up there. And then you walk in here, and this is the combined kitchen and dining room. So you got your little kitchen workspace here, with some cups, fridge, which opens very strangely. And you got your, what you want to call it, your little cupboard there. And your furnace, your sink, and then your dining room table. It's a little poorly lit, but I couldn't get any too much lighting over in this direction because it would have melted the glass right here, which provides a really neat window out towards the village over there. I really do like the effect of glass and shaders together. They really collaborate too. They're not glass, but ice. Ice and shaders really collaborate to provide interesting views. Now, let's head on in here. So this is our bathroom. A little bit cramped and kind of squeezed in, but not as much as the um, the bathroom from the first build. That was really squeezed in in anywhere that it could go. But then we have a little bath here with many nozzles. This is ideally this would be a hot and cold water nozzle, and then that would be the shower head, so you could run a bath or a shower, whichever you prefer. And you got your little sink here and your little, um, little drawer area. Toilet, somewhat functional. So that is all with the bathroom. So we covered everything on this floor, I believe we have. Now, let's head on downstairs. So you walk on downstairs, and you have a little pool table right here. This is somewhat of a lounge relaxation area. A little pool table, some bushes, then you walk on over here and you got your TV and your little sofa. I rather like this room. I think that the walls look very nice. Then you got your little bar over here for drinks. Yeah, rather nice little relaxation hangout room. Perhaps a man cave, somewhat. Not a full man cave, at least in my description of a man cave. So you can head up the staircase here to the second floor. And you've got a little reading nook right here. A little table, some bookcases, a nice skylight. And then if you head on in here, you make your way inside the bedroom. So again, another very standard bed. 
closet, jukebox, and various things all about. A little computer station right there that is lacking a chair. I totally forgot to put a chair there. That is my bad. And then you can add up here to a little balcony overlooking the village and again seeing your neighbor over there. So, thank you guys for watching. That will be all. That is all I have to show you. If there are any World of Corrales members or admins viewing this, I do hope you enjoyed it and that you would value my presence on your server because I would like to be on your server. It's just my personal honest opinion. <laughs> so, for now, that is all. I'm Iron Mango. See ya.